All right, so the next uh, project we're going to work on in Mac 150 is you're going to actually manufacture this part. You're going to actually machine this part uh, in your shop time for Mac 150. All right, and it's going to be uh, it's going to be pretty simple. Uh, you know, we're going to start out really, really uh, conservative here. All right, um, and this this part is simple enough that uh, that we don't you know you can just build it um, off of these dimensions that I give you here. You, you really don't need a print or anything. Um, all right, so uh, I've got a, a new project open. I am in my Mac 150 folder or your Mac 128, whatever you're sharing with your instructor, you are in that folder, okay? All right, so I'm gonna go create a sketch. Okay. Now, the material that we're going to use is going to be that 4x4 four four, um, material that y'all use for Mac 122 and Mac 123. Alright, so I start by drawing a rectangle. I'm going to set these to equal. Okay. And then I'm going to dimension one side. Alright. Um, now, in the, uh, in the video... Last week we talked a lot about constraints and talked about setting things to equal and setting things to perpendicular and all that stuff. Sorry, put my phone on vibrate. But we we talked about all that stuff then. So if um if you're confused about constraints, then I would encourage you to go back and watch that video. Um all right, but all we did uh, is I just control click those lines, set those to equal. Alright? Um now, the uh, next thing I'm going to do is click E for extrude, and I'm going to extrude this up however high, all right? Um, now, the reason I say however high, I don't know how thick the blocks are that you guys have because, you know, every time you cut into those blocks, they get a little bit thicker or a little bit thinner. Uh, if they get thicker, that's amazing, but they get a little bit thinner, um, and I don't know how thick y'all's are. So I'm just going to say, just for now, I'm just going to say 0.7. Okay, whatever. So I've got a block that is 4 inches by 4 inches and 700 thousandths thick. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and sketch. And we are going to put a circle right here right in the dead center we're going to make that 1.25 all right then i'm going to click e for extrude i'm going to go down A hundred and twenty-five thousandths. Right enter. So, all you have here is a four by four plate with a with an inch and a quarter hole in it that is an eighth inch deep. Okay. From there, so th this is this is done, right? This, this one's this one's done. So we're just going to go file save. I'm going to save this as, um, uh, you know, in shop part one. Okay. Whatever. Hang on. File, um, save. Okay. From there, we're going to go manufacture. Then we're going to create a setup. All right. Now, we're going to want you to do model box point in the center, just like that. All right. Notice my origin is coming off of the model 
and not the stock. So then we need to go select Z. So my Z is going to be here. My X is going to be here. Okay. And reselect that. So that is correct there. For my stock, we're going to do no additional stock. And you can post process this and name it whatever you want. You know. All right, and this is going to be in shop part. Man, I am butchering this. In shop part one. Mac 150. And okay. All right, I'm going to try to do this. Well, I'm going to do this with one tool um, just because I want you guys to be able to do it really quickly. Um, and focus on the task at hand, which is uh, seeing this flow of, um, of designing a part to manufacturing a part. All right, so I'm going to right click, new operation, I'm gonna do 2D milling, and then 2D adaptive. Okay, I'm going to select a tool. I'm going to add a new tool. It's going to be a flatten mill. It's going to be 8.375 in mill. All right. All that stuff's good. Close enough. You know, if you got one inch flute length, whatever. Now for your cutting data, I would bump this up to 10,000 if you've got a really good cutter. Like if you've got one of the, um, one of the 3.8 S carbs or something, then, uh, then, then 10,000 is going to be, uh, you know, where you're at, where you're going to want to be. Um, if you've got an end mill that is designed for cutting steel, um, then you probably want to slow that down a good bit. Um, all right. And then my feed rates, uh, I'm just, we're going to set this really conservative for now. Um, you know, just to get you guys going and all this stuff is, is looking pretty good. Not trying to be super efficient here. Just trying to get you guys seeing the process. And this is going to be 0.375, um, let's just say S-carb. Okay. And then select. So geometry, I'm going to select that. My heights. It's asking where do I want my bottom height? And it is from selected contour because I clicked that line and not that line. I clicked that bottom line so it knows the bottom is where I selected. Okay. Now for optimal load, I would probably set that at about, let's go, let's just go 25. Keep it really conservative. All right, we're going to leave about 10 thousandths radially and about 10 thousandths axially. So this is in the X and Y, this is in the Z. All right, and then the only other thing is entrance, so ramp. We want to ramp into this part at a two degree angle. So when I click OK, I want you to see what happens. Okay, so what it's gonna do is instead of just plunging straight down into the material, 
it's going to work its way around nice and slow. All right, and once it gets down to depth, then it's going to start taking your bites. Okay. Now, this 25,000 step over, um, it's going to, uh, it's, it's less than efficient. All right, obviously you would want to be, you know, more in line with, you know, 25% of the cutter or something like that when you're roughing. But for what we're doing here, I would say we keep that pretty conservative. All right, once you get that, then we're going to right click, create derived operation, 2D milling, and then we are going to do 2D pocket. All right, that same tool is still good. All that's still good. Good. All right, so here we need to set this tolerance a little tighter to make sure that it cuts a nice smooth circle. We're going to turn off stock to leave. I know I'm working a little bit upside down, but so set that. We're going to climb mill. We're going to turn on finish passes, all right? And these are just gonna be your perimeter passes. And mine defaulted to 10% of the cutter, which is fine. All right? And then my maximum step over, that's when it's doing my roughing or my, my bottom. So we're gonna leave that. We're gonna play around on this one for a minute just to kind of show you. And then all this should still be good, just from automatic selections. So if you look, let's run this on graphics. Okay, so I'm going to change this over to comparison, and everything is green. Everything's good. Actually, everything's accurate down to. Doesn't seem right. There we go. Starting to get some error now. Okay, so turn that off. So, it cleaned up the entirety of the bottom. It may not look like it. It may, it may look like it did some, some weird stuff here, but it all cleaned up. Now, we can change that. Like, you know, you see how that looks kind of kind of odd. And also, I want you to look at how it's ramping in. Instead of just cramming the cutter straight in, it leads in gradually just to keep from shocking the tool and shocking the material. So we're going to edit this, come over here. We're going to change this step over to like 0.125. And you see what happened to the tool path now. So now it is cutting a lot more, uh, conservatively right it's not it's not going to have as big of a radial step over okay now that's all we want for right now that's it so rough that pocket finish that pocket that's it so from here and again we want to keep this really really simple so we're going to save it and you're going to save this in that same folder, the one that's shared with your instructor. All right. And then 
post process it. So whatever you decide to save it, okay? Make sure you get all this right. All this stuff was talked about in the last video. Okay? And post. This is where I like to add my letter O. All right, here is my code. All 3,800 lines of it. Okay. So you're going to take this and save it on your flash drive and talk to your instructor about when you can do this um all right now i'm for my class we have shop um you know we have mac 150 a certain day so obviously we're going to do hours in that time um but talk to your instructor on when you can do this part um but i'm gonna i'm gonna add in a, a spot on canvas where you can submit your code as well so you're going to save your model all your tool paths you know inside of that model then you're going to upload your program. So your posted code, this right here, what we're looking at, you're going to upload that on Canvas and then you're going to actually produce the part. Okay. So hope that helped. A uh, really simple part. Uh, the next ones, you know, they, um, they'll, they're going to get a little bit more complicated. They're, uh, we're going to get into, um, you know, some some more complicated drawings where we send you a drawing and then you have to model it and cam it um, but all that stuff is going to come with time all right but i want you to see this process of going from design to manufacture I want you to see this all the way through good luck